Hey everybody, this is Mr. Ainsworth, and you get into a lesson here on rational exponents and go through all the different ways we can deal with rational exponents and then changing them to exponential form and back and forth, and we're also going to learn how to evaluate them as well. So a lot of things to do, so get let's get right into it. Get your red pen out to uh, annotate, and let's get started. Okay, the first thing we need to do is we need to learn how to go from radical form like root 6 here to what's called exponential form, okay? Now, what it's in right now, this is called radical form. Like I said, get your red pen out and annotate. Root 6 is uh, called radical 6, root 6, the square root of 6, same thing, okay? And what we want to do today is learn how to first write it in exponential form and then reverse the process and then learn how to evaluate. So quite a bit of things to do, and i got a lot of problems here uh, for us to practice. Okay, so you're going to be pausing and playing through the video if you need to. All right, so the very first thing you do is you understand that the square root of 6, or we say radical 6, is the same thing as 6 to the 1 half power. Okay, uh, typically the 2 is not written right here in the root. Okay, it's assumed to be. But the square root is the second root of 6 or what we call the square root. Now, we're not trying to evaluate it or approximate it as a decimal here, so there's no need for a calculator here. Okay, no calculator needed. No calc uh, needed. Not in this part of the exercise, anyways. So keep that in mind. All right, but the square root is the uh, same as 6 to the 1 half power. Got to get used to that. Now, you could take the square root of something. You could take the fifth root, like a number 3 here. You can take the cube root or the third root of something, the fourth root. And in general, you can take the nth root. You can take whatever root you want. Okay, You just got to get used to ha how to go back and forth between what's called radical form and what's called exponential form. This right here is what's called exponential form, as stated in the directions. Okay, 6 to the 1 half power is equal to the square root of 6. So everybody say square root of 6. Rad 6, okay, and that's equal to 6 to the 1 half power. All right. Now, the uh, let's get used to it with other roots. Now, we do have what's called the cube root, okay? Now, this is called the cube root of 5. That's how you say it properly, the cube root of 5. Now, that's the same thing as taking 5 to the 1 third power. One of the things that you're going to learn in this lesson is that the denominator of the fraction in the exponent represents the root. Okay, so the 3 in the denominator here represents the cube root of 5. Now, if you want to know what that equals to, well, it would help if you had a calculator. Okay, so let me grab one just to show you what it equals. All right, not that you have to do this, it's just that it's kind of nice to see how this changes the number. So I'm going to show you here. All right, so let me boot up the calculator here, and let's bring it over here, clear it out. Okay, now 5 uh, to the power of 1 third. So use parentheses and go 1 divided by 3 for the 1 third power, press Enter. That's about 1.7, okay? So as a decimal, it's 1.7. So the cube root of a number changes it, right? This 1.7099759647 is an approximation. The calculator shows 10 out of an infinite number of digits here, okay, because it can't show them all. It's a repeating infinite decimal. And uh, if you cube this number or take it to the third power, you get back to 5. So if I raise it to the third power, my answer to the third power should get 5 again. See? So the cube root of 5 is a number such that that number cubed is 5. All right, let's play with it again. Okay, uh, number three, the fifth root of two. Well, that is two. Again, this is the fifth root of two, okay, of two. And so what you go, or how you write this, is two to the one-fifth power. The root is always in the denominator of the fraction of the exponent. Okay, this is the root of the number. So I'm taking the fifth root of two. This is a small number, okay, so let me show you. 2 raised to the 1 fifth power, so 1 divided by 5. So you notice it's 2 to the 1 fifth power here. 
And it's a small number because if I raise that number to the fifth power, she get back to two. So if I take my answer and I raise it to the fifth power, I get back to two. See? So it's got to be smaller than the number itself because you got to raise to the fifth power to get back to two. All right? And so right now we're just getting used to going from radical form to exponential form, radical form to exponential form, and then we'll reverse the process. Okay, so right here, I want to rewrite it as some number to the seventh, right? Now, so I'm looking here, I'm looking at the fourth root. of 3. Now the 4th root of 3 is written as 3 to the 1 4th power. Now you'll notice that it's being raised to the 7th power and this is a power to a power. So power to a power as you know from previous lessons alright you multiply exponents. If you take out your lessons from E1 and 2 especially E1 you'll see the power to a power rule and it says multiply exponents, multiply exponents. So one fourth times seven. So one fourth times seven. Well, that's just seven fourths. So I have three to the seven fourths power. Notice I did a little side work here, as I always do for you guys. Okay. So if you want to do that, just do it on the side. Bring your answer back here. Okay. All right. Same thing. Here on number five. We're going to take something raised to the fifth, but first of all, we've got to convert the radical form to exponential. This is the cube root again. Everybody say cube root. All right. Now, the cube root of seven is seven to the one-third power. Power to the power, you multiply your exponents. Uh, one-third times five. One-third times five equals five-thirds. That's why I get seven to the five-thirds power. All right, that's all there is to it. Do a little side work. Just multiply the numerators. Now, if you're starting to get the hang of this, what I want you guys to do is pause and play. All right, pause and play. If you think you know what you're doing, and if you need to, rewind if needed. All right? Now, if you need to hear things twice or even three times, rewind as much as you want. But I want you guys to pause and play, especially if you know what you're doing. Like, if you know how to do number six, pause it, and then when you're ready, press play, and then you can review what I go over. Okay? So pause if you want and go for it. All right. So here we go. we got something to the seven. So we got the fourth root of two. This is the fourth root. So we got two to the one-fourth power. This is a power to power. You multiply your exponents, one-fourth times seven, seven-fourths, one times seven, seven, divided by four, seven-fourths. So you have two to the seven-fourth power. Okay? Now, usually this takes quite a few examples to get used to it. So again, pause and play. Pause it right now, do number seven, and then press play when you're ready and review it. All right? And take yourself through the lesson at your own pace. That's to use videos uh, correctly here. So on this one here, I got something to the sixth. I got the fifth root of ten. So I've got ten to the one fifth power raised to the sixth power. That's power two power. You multiply. Now one fifth times six equals six fifths. So I got ten to the six fifths power. There you go. Here I've got root seven raised to the fifth. Well, that's the square root of seven. And look back up here. I said the square root of 6 was equal to 6 to the 1 half power. The square root is the same as taking that number to the 1 half power. So here I need to take 7 to the 1 half power and then raise it to the fifth. And again, that's power to your power. 1 half times 5 is 5 halves. So I get 7 to the 5 halves power. Okay? Same thing right here on number 9. i got to take the square root of 6, just like I did up here. And that's 6 to the 1 half power. But I'm raising it to the 5th power, so I've got to rewrite exponentially first. So 6 to the 1 half power, raised to the 5th power. 1 half times 5 is 5 halves, so I get 6 to the one uh, 5 halves power. And this is just something that you got to get used to, you know, and get a lot of practice. Watch somebody experienced, you know, do it a whole bunch of times, and then practice on your own. All right, this is the key root of 4. That same thing as 4 to the 1 third power. Power to your power, 
One third times four, that's four thirds. So my answer is four to the uh, four thirds power. And that right there, my friends, is going from exponential, or excuse me, radical form to exponential form. What's called radical form here, like I said, to what's called exponential form. Radical to exponential. Root form to exponential form. If you don't like the word radical, you can say root. Okay? So root form to exponential form, radical form to exponential form. That's all there is to it. Now let's reverse the process and let's go from exponential form here all right, to what's called radical form. Now when you do this, you have to understand that the denominator of the exponent is the root. All right, so this right here is the root and this right here is your power. Okay, so when I rewrite this, I'm, or I'm looking at the cube root of 7 raised to the 5th. The cube root of 7 raised to the 5th. Cube root of 7 raised to the 5th power. That's what I'm thinking in my mind. So I've got to take uh, I've got to take the cube root of seven. Okay, that's that, and then I got to raise it to the fifth. There we go. And once again, it just takes getting used to. And then once the uh, light bulb goes on, this is easy. Okay, like this is the cube root of four raised to the second. So it's the cube root of four raised to the second. Again, that's the root and that's the power. Let me write that down. So this is the root, all right, and this is your power. So the cube root of four raised to the second. The same thing down here. I got to take the fourth root of three and raise to the seventh. So the fourth root of three raised to the seventh power. And once again, you just, just uh, keep trying. And this is where you should be pausing and playing. So I'm going to write it down again. Pause and play. Okay, and go at your own pace. Go at your own pace. Let's see what happens. So uh, if you know what you're doing, pause it and go for number 14 and then press play when you're ready. This is the square root of 5 raised to the third. So square root of 5 raised to the third. This is the cube root of 3 raised to the fifth. The cube root of 3 raised to the fifth. This is the cube root of 3, and then of course you raise it to the fifth. This is the cube root of 2 raised to the fourth. So cube root of 2 raised to the 4th, cube root of 2 raised to the 4th power. This is the 5th root of 3. 5th root of 3 raised to the, well, it's just the 5th root of 3 because raised to the 1st doesn't change anything, right? So it's just the 5th root of 3, 5th root of 3. And if you're wondering what that is, well, check it out on a calculator, okay? So you could take uh, 3, raise it to the power of 1 fifth. There we go. And it's a small number because, and it should be, because if I take that 1.2457, the decimal there, raise it to the fifth, I should get 3. So if I raise it to the fifth, boom, right, get right back to 3. See that? So what's what? That's what it's all about. Here I want to take the fourth root of 10 and raise it to the third. So the fourth root of 10 and raised to the third power. Here's the fifth root of 3 raised to the fourth. So the fifth root of 3 raised to the fourth power. And last one, sixth root of 2 raised to the seventh. So the sixth root of 2 raised to the seventh power. This is the sixth root. Okay, of 2 and raised to the seventh power. 
All right, and the last thing you need to do or be able to do is to simplify, okay? Evaluate, all right, and uh, when it comes to constants here. There's all kinds of ways to do this, but I'm going to show you one way, okay? All right, now, we got a product to a power, and when you do that, you got to raise both to the three half, three halves power. Oh, come on. All right, so what I need to do is I need to take 64, raise it to the 3 halves power. I need to take V to the fourth and raise it to uh, 3 halves power. I got a power to a power or a product to a power, and I got to raise both to the 3 halves power. Okay, now here's the fun part. On the constants, I got to take the square root of 64 and then raise it to the third. Now, what easier do you think? taking 64 and raise it to the third power, which is 64 times 64 times 64, which even I don't know what it is. It's huge. Okay? Or take the square root of 64 first and then cube it. I think, personally, it's a whole lot easier taking the square root of 64 first and then cubing it and then multiplying by whatever this is. And this right here, this is a power to power. And as you guys already know, you multiply exponents. Okay, and that's where the side work's done. Four times three halves is six. Okay, so this is just V to six. So four times three is 12 divided by two is six. Okay, or four divided by two is two times three is six, however you want to do it. Okay, now this right here, square root of 64 is eight. Uh, and then we got a cubit, and then we got to multiply by v to the sixth. Eight cubed is 64 times eight. That's 480 and 32. If you want to, you can multiply it like this. I usually just multiply eight times 60 and get 480, and then multiply four times eight to get 32. Add 480 and 32, which is uh, 512. Okay, you want to verify that? Get your calculator out. Take 8 raised to the third power, and you get 512. So you get 512 times v to the sixth. So once again, uh, show your side work, okay? Do it on the side of your paper in the margins next to the problem. Show it all. Show all your side work. In fact, I'm going to write that down. Show all the side work in the problem. All right, that tells me that you did it on your own and you know what to do, okay? Now let's continue here. Once again on this one here, I've got to take 16 raised to the 3 halves and i got x to the 6 raised to the 3 halves. I'm going to step this puppy out. All right, notice that I'm not skipping any steps here, which I can because, you know, I'm experienced, but I'm teaching the lesson, so we'll step it out, okay? Because, you know, that's the way we do it in here. Okay, on this one here, the denominator is the root. So the second root of 16 is the square root. So i got to take the square root of 16 and then cube it. Here i got to take uh, power to power and multiply. i got 6 times 3 halves, which is 9. So I get times x to the ninth. Now I know the square root of 16 is 4, and i got to cube it. And then i got to multiply that result by x to the ninth. 4 times 4 times 4 is 16 times 4, which is 64. So my end result is 64 times x to the ninth. Notice that I'm stepping it out, working from top down. Now, if I'm going too fast for you guys, one of the things that you guys should be doing, and hopefully you've learned, is that you pause and play, which is something that I've said throughout multiple videos in all my lessons here. you got to go at your own pace. You should be pause and play. If needed, okay, if needed, uh, rewind, okay, if you have to, and re-listen to it. Listen to it multiple times until you fully understand it. You can't do the next ones you can until you understand these. I can guarantee you that. So rewind if you need to and, and do whatever it takes. All right, now on this one here, we got 49 to the 3 halves. 
times x to the fourth raised to the three halves. This means you got to take the second root of 49, or the square root. So the square root of 49 raised to the third times, and then x to the fourth raised to the three halves. Four times three halves is six, so I get times x to the sixth. This is just seven cubed times x to the sixth. Seven times seven times seven is 49 times seven. That's 280 and 63. Uh, 343. Let's verify that. Uh, 7 raised to the third power, 343. So 343 times x to the sixth. You can use your calculator right here, 7 times 7 times 7, I don't mind, but you got to step it out and show me the steps, okay? Show me that you know how to do it. Because that's what it's all about. If you really know how to do it, then do it. Okay. Now, be careful on this next one. It has a negative exponent. As we know, it's just a shift. Shift to the denominator. So let's do that. So this is 1 divided by 27 uh, n to the ninth to the 4 thirds. Okay, so notice that I shift into the denominator and I got to evaluate it. I got to take 27 to the 4 thirds and I got to take n to the ninth, raise it to the 4 thirds. This is where my side work comes in. The cube root of 27 to the 4th, the cube root of 27 to the 4th times this. Now this is power to a power. So 9 times 4 thirds. 9 times 4 thirds is 12. So this is n to the 12th. The only thing I need to do is evaluate this. The cube root of 27 is 3 because 3 cubed is 27. You can even check that out. 27 raised to the 1 third power. 3. Why? Because 3 cubed is 27. So, and this is equal to 3 to the 4th times n to the 12th. Last step, 3 to the 4th is 9 times 9, which is 81. And so that's 1 divided by 81 times n to the 12th. A lot of steps, I know, but if you take it step by step, it's not too bad. Okay? Next one. 49 to the half power, 49 to the one half power times v to the fourth raised to the one half. Well, this is just the square root of 49, and four times a half is two, so this is just times v squared, or seven v squared. You know, they don't have to be that hard. You just think simple, go with the flow. This is 25 to the three halves, so 25 to the three halves times a squared raised to the three halves. You gotta raise both to the power, as I keep on saying in all my videos. So you always take the root of the number. So the second root of the number is the square root. So I gotta take the square root of twenty five and then I gotta cube it. And then here are two times three halves, two excuse me, yeah, two times three halves is three. So this is times a cubed, get rid of the equal signs there, times a cubed square root of 25 is 5, so this is 5 cubed times a cubed, which is what? Hmm. 5 times 5 times 5, 25. Ah. 25 times 5, which is 5 quarters, or 125. So this is 125 times 8 to the third. All right, let's get some more experience here. Once again, you take each number to the power, right? So you got to take 216 raised to the 2 thirds times b to the 6 raised to the 2 thirds. Power to power. Well, this is the cube root now of 216. So you take the cube root of it first, 
and then square it. This right here, 6 times 2 thirds, 6 times 2 thirds is 4. 2 times 6 is 12, divided by 3 is 4, or 6 divided by 3 is 2, times 2 is 4. So this is times b to the fourth. Now the cube root of 216 has got to be 6, I think. Why? Because uh, 6 cubed is 216. So let me just show you that. 216 raised to the one-third power. 6, why? Because if you take 6 and cube it, all right, you get 216. All right, so this is 6 now. i got to square it, and i got to multiply b to the fourth, and that's 36 times b to the fourth. All right, on the next one here, 8, you got to take it to the 4 thirds power, and then you got to take x cubed raised to the 4 thirds power. you got to raise both to the power, as I keep saying. So let's do that. Let's take the cube root of 8. Now, the, the cube root of 8 to the 4th times this, 3 times 4 is 12, divided by 3 is 3, get x cubed here. The cube root of 8 is a number cubed that gives you 8. And since 2 cubed gives you 8, the cube root of 8 has got to be 2. So I've got to take it to the 4th power and then multiply it by x to the 3rd. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 4 times 4, or 16. So 16x cubed. Okay. Last one, I got to take the 16 to the 1 4th power times n to the 4th raised to the 1 4th power. This is the 4th root of 16 times 4 times the 4th. Uh, so, so just times n to the 1st or n. Now, the 4th root of 16 has got to be 2. Why? Because we know that 2 to the 4th is 16, okay? The 4th root of 16 is a number such that if you take it to the 4th power, you get 16. Notice that I stepped it out top down. Last one, i got to take 36 to the 1 half power, multiply it times n squared to the 1 half power. That's the square root of 36 times n. 2 times a half is 1. Notice the side work, 1 there. n to the 1st is just n, and that just gives me 6n. Why? Because the square root of 36 is 6. And that's all there is to it. Now, you've got some more to do. So, okay, now it's your turn. You try it. All right? And check answers. Check all answers. Oops. All answers below or on the next page. All right, so have fun and do your best. Step it out. And I will see you in my next lesson. Because I got to go take care of my dogs. See you guys later. This is Mr. Ainsworth signing out. Bye-bye.